in this video I want to talk to you about active non-harmonic tones. In the last video we talked about passive non-harmonic tones and in this video we want to turn that round and talk about active non-harmonic tones. When uh, talking about any non-harmonic tones, remember we're talking about notes that do not fit in the harmony. They are non-harmonic or non-chord tones. They don't fit in the chord that is going on at that moment in the music and therefore they're dissonant. But if they happen between chords that uh, are going on, so you have a chord and then you have some non-harmonic material then another chord, they are a little less distracting, they are less active, they are therefore more passive than when they occur on the beat or on the chord, in the chord. If they happen at the time when the chord is happening, then they are very noticeable and they're very active. They demand that they be resolved. So there are three steps in most cases with these kind of more active non-harmonic tones. Almost all of the passive non-harmonic tones that I talked about last time could be made to be a little bit more active. Um, we noticed that I think I was talking at one point about an escape tone or an appoggiatura, one of those two, and I mentioned in the last video how depending on where the harmony comes, the, uh, the, the, the non-harmonic note may be passive or active. Here's an example of that. This really is just a passing tone, and this is called an accented passing tone because it is more active. What you find here is that this note is non-harmonic, and it resolves to a note here that is harmonic. Now, if this note had happened over here, in other words, if I rewrote this entire section here and instead I wrote it like this and put the non-harmonic tone a little earlier we would have a passive non-harmonic tone. This would simply be a passing tone. You'd have a harmony here and a, har and a harmony here and this would be a non-harmonic passing tone that happened in between the harmony. However, if I shift this over a little bit, I make this note longer, and then this note happens on this harmony. You see how I've done that? If I take that, I'm just shifted it a little bit, change the, uh, change the, the uh, note values just a little bit to move this now is a, is a quarter note, and then we get to an eighth note on the other harmony that then resolves to an F sharp that is part of that harmony, and this now becomes a whole lot more active. This you hardly notice the passing tone, it just passes. This you really notice the passing tone because it clashes with the harmony right as the rest of the notes are happening and then it resolves itself into the harmony. So this is an example of what could have been a passive uh, non-harmonic tone becoming a very active harmonic tone. And this particular type is called an accented passing tone because it, it clashes, it accents that moment where uh, it occurs. Now, that then is just taking passive harmonic tones and making them active. There's a whole other set of non-harmonic materials called suspensions where you purposefully prepare the ear to be ready to hear a clash and then the clash occurs which creates a tension and then there is a resolution back into the harmony. So there's three stages. There is preparation which leads to then the uh, suspension itself and then resolution. Preparation, suspension, resolution. Now I can actually write this slightly differently to help you understand what's going on even more. The preparation and the suspension are on the same level. The resolution is down by step. So the suspension occurs and then is resolved down by step. We have a preparation that gets the ear ready for the suspension, the suspension itself, and then a resolution down by step. Now, there are four different types of suspension. I'll just get this out of the way so we don't confuse ourselves. Four different types of suspension. And I've drawn up examples of them here. The first is the 4-3 suspension. Now these are essentially figured bass numbers. It's saying that above a given bass note, 
there is going to be a fourth which resolves to a third. That is the suspension and resolution part. So there is going to be some kind of preparation, we'll talk about that in a moment. Then there is going to be a bass note above which there is a fourth resolving to a third. And that's a four-three suspension, suspension and resolution. And we can see that here. In this case, this note is the preparation. It's preparing the ear for what is going to become here a suspension. This is the non-harmonic tone. That C does not fit in that harmony. And that is going to move down by step to the resolution. The B there does fit in the harmony. And if I count up here, I'll see that I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4 to 3 suspension. So the base is the is the counting point, if you will, it's the, the place we start. We start with the bass, we count up, and we see where is the note that's causing the problem, where is the note that's causing the aggravation, what interval distance is it above, and then we would observe that that should then step down by step to resolve into the chord. That's how a suspension works. It's prepared, it happens, and then there's a step down to resolve it. If you don't have those three things going on, then you don't really have a suspension happening. The whole point with a suspension is that it, it is prepared, it happens, and it resolves down by step. Let's look at this one. This is called the 7-6 suspension. And uh, you'll notice here, in this case, there's a chord going to occur here. It could be any chord that contains the note G. And that note, then, is the preparation. So you don't have the note, I don't want to give the impression you just have the note on its own with nothing else. This is part of a chord that's happening that has a C in it. This would be part of a chord that has a G in it. Then, on the next beat, you have the suspension itself. This is the note that does not fit in this chord. This chord that we have here uh, is going to be an F sharp A C chord, and the G does not fit in that chord. The G is not part of it. But then the F sharp is part of the chord and the suspension resolves down by step to become part of the chord. Now this is chord of 7, 6 suspension and again if I just simply count up, if I count from here and what will happen is, I'm, obviously if I count to a G, I'm going to, that G, I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, I'm going to have to count, you know, up for ages. You don't count exactly that distance, you count till the first time you come across a G. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven, two. The first time I come to an F sharp. One, two, three, four, five, six, six. Officially, if I was using figured bass, depending on whether or not this was in the key signature, I might have to mark that, either put a slash through or put a sharp in front of it to say that that is an F sharp, it's not just an F natural. And, when you have uh, the 4-3 suspension, or when we get to it, the 9-8 suspension, you're dealing with root position chords. This chord ends up, when it's fully resolved, as a root position chord. When you have the 7-6 suspension or the bass suspension, then the chord ends up being a first inversion chord. This chord is actually an F sharp A C chord when it finally resolves. At this point, it doesn't really, it's not really anything. It's a chord with a wrong note in it. But then when that wrong note resolves, steps down by step, and, and ends up being back in the chord, it creates a first inversion chord for a 7-6 suspension. Same principle on the 9-8 suspension in terms of how we get there. This is the preparation. There will be a chord with a D in it. Then there will be a point at which that D no longer fits in the harmony, and that is the suspension. Then that D will step down down by step to resolve back into the chord. This chord is a C, E, G chord. There's the E, there's the G, here are two Cs, and the suspension occurs a ninth to an octave. The ninth above the bass resolves down to an octave. This could have happened up higher, This the, the D to the C could have been in the alto voice with the uh, G in the tenor voice. It wouldn't matter, we just count up to the first time that we encounter that note. We go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 2, 8, 9, 8, suspension. 
This is occasionally actually called a 2-1 suspension because if you really count up, the first time you get to a D is a 2. 1, 2, and then 1. So sometimes it's called a 2-1 suspension, more commonly a 9-8 suspension. But again, the three basic steps are involved. You start with a preparation in the chord before. Then there is the suspension itself. Then there is a resolution down by step. That's the three steps. Then it's just a matter of counting above the bass to figure that out. This last one is the bass suspension. This is a, a little bit, potentially a little bit more tricky because the actual um, problem note, the note that's causing the suspension is in the bass. Again, preparation occurs in the bass note immediately before. Here is the note that doesn't fit. It resolves down by step to a resolution. That's the suspension, there's the resolution. When you finally get to the resolution, you end up with a first inversion chord. This is a D chord, D, F sharp, and A. There's two Ds, F sharp, and A. It's a D chord in first inversion. So it ends up as a first inversion chord. But immediately before that, again, you have a chord that doesn't really exist, doesn't really mean anything. It's, it's just a chord with a wrong note in it. The tricky part is it's easy to, to, easier to label these because you've got a stable bass note. The bass note remains the same when you're talking about a distance 9 to 8, 7 to 6, 4 to 3. This one's tricky because when you, when you think about it, the bass is moving further away. It's the bass that's the problem. The bass is creating the suspension and it moves further away, so the interval gets bigger. And it's just a little harder to get your mind around, but it's, it's, it's not that difficult if you remember that what we're talking about here is a suspension happening in the bass. All right. Now there are some figured bass that you might encounter with this that can almost be more misleading than the concept itself. And I'm not going to go into that now. We'll get into that a little bit more in class. We'll talk about how would you put figured bass for this if you needed to. I am actually less concerned that you understand the figured bass for this than that you understand the concept. Because what we're going to do is take some of our harmonizations that we've already done that are good, solid harmonizations, and we're going to look for ways that we can put various types of non-harmonic material in, passive on NHTs and active NHTs. Can we find a place to put a suspension in? Can we find a place to put passing tones in? And we're going to see if we can create some interesting textures as a secondary layer above and beyond the harmonic structure we have. So we will first we'll have a good solid chord progression and then we'll look for how are there ways that we can enhance that with non-harmonic material that is put in in a way that falls in line with the common practice era where we control the dissonance, where we have careful resolution, where we have active and passive non-harmonic materials. So that's what we're going to be looking at. Go back over this, make sure you understand the concept of a suspension, the three stages and that you can then uh, see and understand how I have labeled these four, three, seven, six, nine, eight, and then the bass suspension. You get what's going on. You see what's harmonic, you see what's not harmonic, and what is uh, occurring on the beat and what is resolving after the beat. You get that concept. If you get all of that, then we're, we're ready to start trying to find ways to put that into our own harmonizations. If you have any questions, as always, take careful note of what those questions are. Try watching the video a couple more times, see if you, you can answer the questions for yourself. And if you can't, bring the questions to class and we'll see what we can figure out there. Thank you.